Yuri Vygoshansky is a name that features prominently in the debate as to who is the greatest sports scientist of all time. This is likely a consequence of him being a part of the communist Soviet system, where in contrast to modern sports science research, athletes would be compelled rather than asked to take part in training studies. In recent times, he has become famous for being the first sports scientist to identify plyometrics if I put that term in inverted commas, and to apply the use of plyometrics to improve sporting performance in athletes. Despite his work going well beyond the use of plyometrics, in many cases with modern strength and conditioning coaches, there's almost a belief of essentially, hey, he discovered plyometrics, thanks for that. But as he was active in the 60s, 70s and 80s, it should be assumed that modern strength and conditioning coaches know more. This assumes two things. Firstly, that all of the research in the Soviet Union has been translated into the English language and subsequently read by a strength and conditioning coach. Secondly, it assumes that modern sports science research is somehow superior to that which was done in the Soviet Union. On a philosophical level, you could say that Dark Age Britain came a thousand years after the Roman Republic. Yet if you ask any historian, they would say it's not close as to which civilization is more advanced, and it's not the one that came later. So what advantage would the Soviet Union have had that may have led them to be more advanced than modern technology? Once again, it comes down to the power of the communist system to compel athletes to take part in trial and error training studies. I think it's worth pointing out that when you look at modern truly high level athletes, you'll find a fair proportion of the training methods Verkachansky advocates being implemented. It's usually at a mid to lower level his training recommendations get missed. To give an idea of some of the ideas described by Verkachansky, and to bring this video back onto the main theme of the YouTube channel, which is martial arts slash combat sports, I'm going to single out this quote. Thus, it can be said that speed strength, strength endurance, and speed endurance are not derivatives of strength, speed and endurance, but are totally independent qualities. The key quality I'm going to focus on here is speed endurance. The idea of speed endurance as being a distinct quality is something you almost never hear described by a modern strength and conditioning coach. In terms of combat sports, this is often a source of conflict when a striking coach meets a strength and conditioning coach. If you look at the way professional boxers have historically trained, a workout such as 8 to 15 rounds of 3 minutes on a mixture of the pads and the heavy bag are not uncommon. If you look at kickboxing and Thai boxing, you may find similar style workouts. If you contrast this with the mentality of a strength and conditioning coach, often a strength and conditioning coach will be thinking in terms of a workout as 8 exercises of 3 sets with loads that may go up to 200 kilos or higher depending on the exercise and the size of the athlete. Therefore, when a strength and conditioning coach hears of the numbers involved in a workout on the heavy bag, such as 60 punches a round for 8 rounds with a weight of 0 kg, the numbers can seem outlandish. Therefore, it's not uncommon for a modern strength and conditioning coach to call for this type of workout to be heavily reduced or scrapped. Aside from the idea of speed endurance as a distinct quality separate from strength and endurance, the other training concept that Vergashansky describes in his books that is most relevant to martial arts slash combat sports training is the idea of dynamic correspondence exercises. You can see some dynamic correspondence exercises being done on screen for the shot put. Vergashansky has five criteria for dynamic correspondence exercises. I'm not going to go through the full list of criteria right now. You can find a full definition online if you search for Vergashansky's dynamic correspondence exercises. The idea behind dynamic correspondence exercises is the mixing of strength with technique. These exercises are typically referred to as specialized strength exercises elsewhere in the Russian sports science literature when it's translated. In this context, the term special is used to refer to the task or sport skill, which is deemed as completely unique 
and therefore requiring its own unique strength and conditioning requirements. To look to modern examples with specialized strength exercises, I would look to b-vol punching with bands. You can also find many successful wrestlers, typically those who have followed a Soviet lineage, recreating elements of technique whilst performing strength exercises. In his book, Fundamentals of Special Strength Training in Sport, Vakashansky cites some references to examples of special strength training methods that were researched in the Soviet Union. To quote, for example, to develop strength for the water polo throw, better results are obtained by throwing a medicine ball weighing 2 kg than with a 4 kg ball. The increases in throwing distance were 13.6% and 8.9% respectively. Conceptually, the idea of throwing a heavier ball is similar to a boxer punching with banded resistance. I think it's worth pointing out that the Soviets were aware of potentially negative influences on technique by the mixing of strength with technique. For instance, if you look at this quote from Fundamentals of Special Strength Training, Valkashansky writes, throwing the 4kg ball also had a negative influence on technique. If you look at this other quote, the optimal weight for javelin training, which did not disrupt technique, was 3 kg. Overwhelmingly though, I think it's fair to say that despite athletes being aware of the potentially negative influences of special strength training on technique, the Soviets, and in many cases other modern world class athletes, find this practice to be effective. So on a closing note to this video, I've explored two concepts which Vergashansky describes in his work. The thing that he's most famous for is the observation of the stretch shortening cycle and the use of plyometric training methods. I haven't explored plyometrics in this video, but there are plenty of other videos on this, especially in relation to Verkashansky. Beyond the concepts of speed endurance and dynamic correspondence exercises, Verkashansky has many things to say in his books on other topics such as muscular endurance max strength trading and the development of speed strength or explosive power. So I recommend picking up his books even now if you're interested in sports science.